Imagine if right-wing extremist neo-Nazi skinheads had spent the last eight months shooting up an office party in California, torturing and massacring concertgoers, murdering people outside bars in Paris, blowing up airports and metro stations in Brussels, gunning down gay people at a nightclub in Orlando, plowing down tourists with a truck in Nice, axe attacking passengers on a train in Würzburg, stabbing a woman and her three daughters at an alpine resort in southern France, hacking people up with machetes on the street in Breutlingen, and blowing themselves up outside a music festival in Ansbach. How do you think the media would respond? Would they hide or ignore the hateful ideology that motivated such attacks? No, of course not. It would be like Salon.com on steroids. Yet even after three deadly attacks in Germany in a single week alone, the nothing to do with Islam narrative is stronger than ever. The BBC even ran a headline suggesting that the music festival suicide bomber was the victim and not the cause of the bombing. It's a surprise that this isn't how they reported on the 9-11 attacks back in 2001. This is the same media outlet that refused to report the Iranian migrant Munich shooter was named Ali. This is the same media outlet that suggested calling a terrorist a terrorist or an Islamist was politically incorrect. If we can't identify the problem for what it is, how do we even begin to tackle it? Our media and political establishment is more concerned about people being mean to Muslims than the fact that European streets are running with blood several times a week now because of violence committed by Muslims. I predicted that Germany was next in line for a fresh bout of cultural enrichment. What I'm predicting is this is going to happen in Germany. There's going to be a massive attack. And there's going to be a massive backlash. Because the mass molestation of over a thousand women in Hamburg and Cologne, which the media and authorities also tried to cover up, just wasn't a large enough serving of diversity. It wasn't a difficult call to make, given that the German government admits that it's lost track of at least 130,000 migrants. Whoops! That Syrian migrants are now going all-out jihad isn't a surprise, given that 21% of them support ISIS. Given that 22% of young Muslim migrants living in Germany support suicide bombings. Oh yeah, and Obama has accepted two-thirds of his 10,000-strong Syrian refugee target, 99% of whom are Sunni Muslim. Hillary Clinton is set to accelerate that program if she becomes president. Meanwhile, John Kerry says that air conditioners are just as big a threat as ISIS. Good luck, America. Given that Europe is now reaping the wonderful benefits of mass uncontrolled immigration, I have to make one of these videos every single week. You're probably sick of hearing me say the same thing, and quite frankly, so am I. So I'll leave you with the words of Stefan Molyneux. When is this going to stop? When are political leaders going to be held accountable? for their decisions, the decisions that they themselves rarely have to live with, but the average citizen does. Because the blood flowing through the streets of Germany, France, Belgium, the United States, and many other countries has grown from a trickle to a steady flow. Over time, it may become deep enough to form an ocean wherein your civilization, your freedoms, your savings, and your children may drown. You cannot, you must not let this stand. You can make a difference. You have a voice. Your peaceful action is required now. Nothing is a higher priority than preserving your culture, your freedoms. Your ancestors fought to liberate you and keep you safe and free. Your children, born and unborn, rely on you for the same duty. Do not fail them.